Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to be talking about plant hormones and we've already had a look at the menstrual cycle which shows hormones in action in humans and now we're going to see how hormones in plants allow them to grow effectively. So we think of two key parts of the plant that we have. We have the roots, roots, and then of course we have the shoots. We can also call that the stems, so the shoots or the stems, okay? Now, both these parts of the plant are sensitive to different things in the environment and they respond because of a hormone, which we'll look at in a bit. But they are sensitive to slightly different things. So the roots are sensitive to gravity, so gravity, and also, well, roots take up water, so they're also sensitive to water. Now, plant shoots, if you think plant shoots don't lie flat on the ground, they grow upright. So they are also sensitive to gravity, but in obviously the opposite way to the roots, because they are going to grow away from gravity. And they are also sensitive to light. And this is extremely important because a plant needs to try and take in as much light as it can. And it will grow in order to allow it to do this. Now, we have two words which you really need to know. And... They describe the response of a plant in, all, um, in relation to one of these. So the growth of a plant in response to gravity is known as gravito, gravitotropism. Gravitotropism. Sometimes you'll see that known as geotropism, but gravitotropism is correct. Now, the plant growing in response to light is known as phototropism phototropism. Photo just means in relation to light because a photograph is taking a picture because of light. Phototropism, tropism is growing and in response to light is the photo part. Okay, now the hormone which is involved in both gravito and phototropism is known as auxin. A-U-X-I-N. Auxin. Very important you remember that. Now, these responses happen as a result of the distribution of auxin. And so that means if we have loads of auxin in one place and not as much in somewhere else, that will cause a response. And if we had uh, almost no auxin somewhere in comparison to somewhere else, that would cause a different response. So it's not the case that if we have auxin, we get something happening. It's a case of how much do we have in comparison to somewhere else. And so let's take a look at how that works. Well, if we had a plant which is growing and there was only light coming from one side. So this is a light source and we have a plant which is going to be growing here. What we would get is we have the plant, let's say this is when the plant's really young. Eventually, over time, the plant will grow like this. So the plant will grow like that and then obviously it'll have its flowers and, and whatever else. I was never good at drawing, but you get the idea. The plant will now face the light and now it's getting as much light as it can possibly get. And if we zoom in, let's just say we're gonna have a look at this part of the shoot here. What we actually have is something occurring like this. So this is the plant shoot. The auxin is feeling the effects of the light and the light persuades the auxin to accumulate on the side which is not lit up, so the unlit side. So you still have some auxin here, but there is loads more auxin on this side. So let me just make that clear. Here's the light, here's the light shining on this side. There we go. And the auxin has moved away from that light. Now the auxin on this side promotes growth of this side of the shoot. So this side here is going to grow. It's going to grow faster than the other side. So growth is going to occur faster because this side will still grow, but just not as quickly. And as this side is growing faster, as we can see here, this side gets longer and longer and longer. And because the shorter side doesn't, it means it's gonna to have to bend around to keep up with it take the shorter distance if you like and that means that the plant is now facing towards the light okay so that is a clear example of phototropism there 
Now, the reason gravitotropism works differently in the roots as it does in the shoots is because, let's just draw some roots in orange here, is because the roots respond in the opposite way to the shoots when it comes to auxin. So auxin here has clearly promoted the growth of the shoot. However, the roots um, do not like auxin. So a high amount of auxin reduces the amount of growth in the roots. And so this allows the roots and the shoots to respond differently and more importantly, in the opposite way um, to the hormone auxin. Now, finally, we can use plant hormones, especially in agriculture. So the hormones can be used in agriculture um, to allow us to farm more effectively. One way that we can do this is that cuttings can be given root powder and root powder contains various plant hormones. So they're given root powder and the root powder will allow the cuttings to grow roots. So a cutting is, let's say this plant um, up here, if we took a cutting off part of the plant, normally the stem, um, we can then plant that and grow an identical clone of this plant out of the cutting. However, if we take that cutting and it doesn't have any roots, we need to form those roots as soon as we can to anchor the plant and allow the plant to grow. And so this root powder allows us to greatly speed up um, the rate of growth of the plant. Now, plant hormones are also used as weed killers. Weed killers. They're very efficient at killing the plants because most weeds are large plants which we can, um, we can persuade them to grow really fast. So if we put loads of growth hormone into these weed killers, the weeds will take up so much growth hormone that they'll go into uncontrollable growth. So at least to uncontrollable, uncontrollable growth. And that proves fatal to the plant. It's growing faster than it can keep up with and it proves fatal to the plant. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. That was a brief overview, really, of how plant hormones are used. Um, make sure you remember the auxin example um, in terms of gravitotropism and phototropism. If you do have any questions, then feel free to use the link below to send me an email or post a comment, and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.